The Central Bank of Nigeria says financial exclusion rates dropped from 46% in 2020 to about 26% in 2023. But despite that commendable progress, the banking regulator is still not satisfied and it is exploring more ways to boost financial inclusion in Nigeria. It has launched three initiatives, the Women Entrepreneurs Finance Code, Women's Financial Inclusion Dashboard, and the Roadmap for the Financial Inclusion of Forcibly Displaced People. The 2023 EFINA Access to Finance Survey reveals that 26% of the adult population remains financially excluded. This unacceptable statistic highlights a critical challenge. Almost one third of Nigerians cannot access capital to grow businesses, secure savings for the future, or obtain insurance to mitigate risks. The absence of these services sadly traps individuals in cycles of poverty and stunts national economic expansion. Widespread access to financial services is an enabler of economic activity. Micro, small, and medium enterprises, which are the backbone of Nigeria's economy, can thrive with improved access to credit, creating jobs, and boosting productivity. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Olayemi Kadosu, at the second International Financial Inclusion Conference, also expressed optimism that the new capital requirements for banks operating in the country will enhance their capacity to drive financial inclusion. In line with its efforts to deepen financial inclusion, the Central Bank of Nigeria recently introduced new minimum capital requirements for banks. This strategic move ensures that banks are well capitalized, enabling them to take on greater risks, particularly in underserved markets. With a stronger capital base, banks can provide more loans and financial products to MSMEs, rural communities, and other vulnerable segments that have previously struggled to access former financial services. This policy not only strengthens financial stability, but also serves as a catalyst for inclusive growth. The World Bank Country Director for Nigeria also made suggestions on how the country can reduce exclusion of financial services and how the institution is collaborating with the CBN. Addressing shortcomings in payment systems, microfinance regulation, and consumer protection. It is important to further improve the payment system to reduce transaction failures. It is equally important to facilitate a well-regulated and supervised microfinance sector, for instance, by adopting robust risk-based approaches and leveraging modern technologies, such as red text, which allows, which is a platform that allows receiving data directly from the players digitally and subtech to analyze that data and inform policy actions. The second focus area of our partnership looks at unlocking supply of inclusive SME finance at scale for productive purposes in the economy. Also up for discussion at the sideline of the event is the role of agency banking in driving financial inclusion. We have agents and agents are essentially human banks or human ATMs, you can put it like that. And in, in many cases, human banks. So by deploying agents to many rural locations where banks cannot be commercially viable, but human agents or human ATMs or human banks 
can be commercially viable. This allows us to be able to distribute banking services. So with an agent, you can open an account, and this can allow you to go into the underserved banks. The consensus from here is that the more the people have access to financial services, the more they can easily make payments, save, and access loans to expand their businesses. This will contribute to the GDP and help to eradicate poverty. Lilian Jijingi Aguda, Arise News.